So today I want to talk to you about uh, Grindel Worm. The Latin name for Grindel Worm is Echetreus bucholosi. It's a bit of a mouthful. Now I must stress that uh, Grindel Worm is not white worm. Quite often on eBay I see people listing Grindel Worm or white worm and they're getting the two confused. Now there's a distinct difference between Grindel Worm and white worm. Now at this point I just want to mention another micro species called Micro Worm which you can definitely not mistake. Microworm is tiny. You can only barely see it with your eyes. Grindelworm, on the other hand, is approximately one centimeter long, whereas whiteworm can reach up to four centimeters and they tend to be a lot thicker than the grindelworm. Another distinct difference between grindelworm and whiteworm is that you can cultivate grindelworm at room temperature, but to successfully cultivate whiteworm, you need to keep them in a fridge. Grindelworm are hermaphroditic. Uh, that means that they're both male and female. So two worms will mate with each other, both fertilizing each other. This allows them to maximize their numbers very quickly. Now, you can double your colony of worms within 28 days. They breed very fast. Each worm will lay approximately about a thousand eggs and they will hatch after about 12 days. Cultivating your grindle worm is very easy, but first you need a culture. Now, I stopped breeding these worms last year um, I just had so many other projects I was dealing with. But I decided to start up again because I've got thousands and thousands of guppy fry. And Grindle Worm is perfect for these fry. Now I bought um, a sample on eBay and it arrived today, but I tell you I am very, very disappointed. Although it was very cheap, there are very, very few worms in the bag. And I'm just hoping that I'll be able to raise a culture from this. Now I know when I used to sell this, even when I was just putting a hundred worms in the bag, it used to be thousands. Now it's going to be touch and go if this culture even develops. So this is the bag of worms I received and I've checked quite thoroughly and I don't see that many worms. Now I know there's a lot of worms in the soil itself, but normally when I've been selling this, the worms will be crawling all over the bag. So these are the tubs that I use for cultivating my worms. Now this is just um, a Chinese takeaway tub. You can buy them for five for a pound in many stores. Now the important thing about this is that they are shallow and it's easy to work with the plastic. Remember to make holes in the top of the lid. These breathing holes is important for allowing all the gases to escape and allowing fresh air in. And I also put some down the side. This is so that if I'm stacking my tubs, that air can still get in. Now remember to make these holes quite tiny. Um, you don't want any fruit fly or any other pests crawling in there. If you do live in an area where fruit fly and other pests are a problem, then I suggest you put some sort of very thin gauze over these holes. So this is my soil mix that I use. It's basically coconut fiber. Now you can buy this in any pet shop in a brick form. You then put it in a bucket of water and let it soak. The coconut fiber will break apart and you can then use it. Now I also mix some dark soil into this, which I get from my local garden center. Just make sure that it doesn't have any poisons in there to kill off any funguses and that sorts because it will kill off your worms as well. So it's quite important that you don't want your soil to be drying. This is the quickest way of killing off your worms. And with Grindle Worm, you don't want it soaking wet because they won't maximize laying their eggs in this extremely wet soil. You want it in between. And it's just a judgment call that you're gonna to have to make. So I've got my soil in my tub now and it is important that you do not make this very deep. The reason for this is that uh, your soil will go off if it gets contaminated. It will be more difficult to get your worms as well if they're deep down in the soil. So I have discovered that over the years of doing this, that the shallower the soil, the better. So from this bag I received in the post, I'm going to create two cultures just in case one fails. It gives me a better chance of actually trying to raise these little worms. So I have my two cultures set up now. Now I must be honest, this is one of the poorest cultures I've ever received. I mean, there's almost no sign of life in this at all. So it's going to be a bit of a miracle to get this started. Okay, so now your next stage, now that you've uh, placed your worms in the culture, 
is to feed them. Now there's several different foods that you can feed your worms. Many people use the bread and yogurt method, uh, porridge method, dry cat food. Now I use wet cat food. I've noticed by using uh, wet cat food is that the worms multiply a lot faster. For some reason they can digest this food a lot easier and the high protein in this food obviously boosts the egg laying capabilities. So you can use any cat food, um, doesn't really matter. This is the stuff I use. Now, like I said, some people use dry cat food and you wet it. If your food isn't wet, the worms won't be able to eat and digest it properly. And not only that, it will tend to go moldy. So I have found that using this wet cat food, it gets eaten very, very quickly. So you need to keep your eye on your tub, maybe feed twice a week. So you don't want to give it them a lot. See how that goes. Now I will come back to this culture in about a week's time to see if it has taken. And then I'll show you how to collect them and feed to your fish.